the easiest to ignore, and yet one of the most important dialog boxes inside of Camera Raw can be reached by this little blue section of text below the image. It's very easy to miss it, but inside of here are all kinds of important settings when exporting your images to Photoshop. If you click on it, it's going to bring up a dialog box. Inside of this dialog box has a number of different settings that are extremely important. Let's start with the one at the top. The color space is sRGB. If you click this little tick down, it gives you many options. And what it actually shows depends on your particular computer. However, however, the most important ones are here up at the top, where you have Adobe RGB, Pro Photo, and sRGB. Color match is at the top, but in 20 plus years, I have never once used a color match. So I'm sure it's nothing you need to worry about. Now, which setting you use depends on whether your workflow is going to require Adobe RGB, ProPhoto, or sRGB. Now, there's many different theories about which color profile that you should be using. While this is a very deep topic, I like to try and help my students now by asking them a few basic questions. And that allows them to choose the color profile that best meets their needs. And by the way, a color profile and a color space are the exact same thing. So my habit is to call this an Adobe RGB color profile. However, as you can see, it is also called a color space. Please don't get confused by that. If you are only going to be using images for the internet and other digital devices, then you can just stick with sRGB, which is a universal color profile slash color space for digital devices. If your work is more editorial based and used in magazines, then I recommend you use Adobe RGB because it handles more colors than sRGB. And ultimately, even though it has more colors, it comes off as more muted colors, duller, so it makes an easier transition to CMYK, which is what's used for printing magazines. So in those cases, I recommend that the person use Adobe RGB because that's more of an industry standard. If your work is going to be exclusively in your own controlled environment, meaning it's on your computer going to your printer to be hung up on your wall, then you may consider simply using ProPhoto, which is going to have the most colors available to your computer and printer to use when printing out images. However, ProPhoto handles so many colors that it doesn't always make transitions as well as it could. However, ProPhoto is not as industry standard as Adobe RGB is. For example, ProPhoto is for photographers and Adobe RGB is for printers. So if your work is going to printers, you don't want to send them pro photo because I can all but guarantee a random technician isn't this, doesn't necessarily know what pro photo is and may not handle the file properly. Uh, but that's just speculation on my part. So, but ultimately, it just depends on what you think is best for your own workflow. When you really don't know what to do and all else fails, I recommend you go with Adobe RGB. The next setting over is bit depth. And by Photoshop's default, it is set to 8 bits per channel. The reason it's set to 8 bits per channel inside of Photoshop is because there are slash were many filters that would only use 8 bit per channel. However, inside of Adobe CC, all filters now support 16 bit. So there really is no reason to be using 8 bit anymore. However, that's the reason that it actually defaults to 8 bits per channel. You should always, unless you happen to know better, select 16 bits per channel because it's going to give you the smoothest gradients within your image, which will ultimately avoid banding. Down here, we have image sizing. And I have a checkbox here that says resize to fit. Now, I will point out that this dialog box as a whole has changed from one version of Camera Raw to the next as well as from a Mac to a PC. So while the information is the same, it has changed and it does become a little confusing. For example, this checkbox right here, resize to fit on the PC, does not behave the same as it does 
on the Macintosh. So I will preface this with that. So I will point out that for whatever reason, the last time I checked, it behaved differently. Right now with this unchecked, its default is 16 megapixels, which means this is what the camera took. It was a 16 megapixel camera. I took a picture. This is the default. However, if I check this box, I now have the option to manually change it to whatever megapixels I actually want. And you would say, well, why would I want something different? Well, if the default is 16, and if you look down here, grayed out a little bit, it says 16.35 by 10.87. So that is what the 16 megapixel camera is doing. But if you think about a magazine, they're actually doing 11 by 17 and likely a little bit larger for bleed. So you're talking 17 and a quarter inches. So in which case, I would raise this up to 18 because if I say 18 and I click OK, now this goes up to 17.35 by 11.5. So what that ultimately means is by making a small change within this dialog box, it will alter the way that it outputs the pixels for us. So in general, I would recommend outputting all of your images at 18 megapixels. Now for this particular computer, I prefer to use three megapixel. Yes, only three. The reason is that this computer is only used for classes. So I like to work with the smallest images that I can. You know, this way I'm not working with these big files that take a long time to render. I only have a small seven by five image. It's really easy to work with. Now down here we have resolution. Now, I don't want to go over what resolution is. I actually cover that in my Photoshop Perfection basic course. However, if you were to leave this resolution at 300 pixels per inch, that's perfectly fine. Down here you do have an option to sharpen on the way out of Camera Raw. However, I very strongly recommend you do not actually use sharpening within Camera Raw. And since I'm right here in the dialog box, I'll also show you right here that there is a sharpen tab with sharpening amount. I strongly recommend just turning it off. In my testing, all it simply does is damage the image. It actually creates very fine pixelated lines and basically creates these tiny little jaggies that do not happen when you use other methods of sharpening with inside of Adobe Photoshop. And lastly, down here at the bottom, we have a checkbox called Open in Photoshop as Smart Objects. Basically, down here at the bottom, it says Open Image. If I click Open Image, it will simply open this image up as a regular pixel-based image placed on a background layer. However, if I click on Open in Photoshop as Smart Objects, now, by default, when I click on this button, which now says Open Object, it will open this image as a smart object, which will allow me to then work on it a little bit in Photoshop and come back to the raw processor if I really want to. So that's a huge benefit to working non-destructively. So to wrap up the thought, any of the settings that you place inside of this blue dialog box, these are the settings that once you click open object or open image, those are the settings that are going to be brought into Photoshop. So if you notice, this is a 7 by almost 5, and I click open image, and then I go image, image size, you'll notice now it's 7 by almost 5 with the same resolution. You can also see down here that it has Adobe RGB with a 16-bit depth. If you find that yours does not say this, it's a very easy fix. There's a little arrow right next to it. If you click it, you can then come down and there's a whole bunch of different options available to you. Uh, if you just select document profile, it'll give you this information. Because it's the only place in Photoshop that easily and clearly tells you which color space slash color profile that you are using within the open image.